Thank you for listening to the Living Zen Podcast. If you've been listening for a while and are wondering how you can take the next step in developing your own Zen practice, or how you can more formally connect with our community, please explore our online orientation to Zen practice, which you can find on our website at zenwest.ca. If you enjoy the resources that we make available online, we would very much appreciate your support. There are a number of ways that you can help us continue to do the work we do. One of the best ways is by becoming a part of our community as an associate. Your commitment of $10 a month will ensure that offerings like the Living Zen Podcast, eZendo, and our online orientation to Zen will continue to be available around the world to everyone with an interest in truly living Zen. To become an associate, please visit our website at zenwest.ca and click on Become an Associate. Many more Zen Talks are available for purchase on iTunes and at Amazon.com. Just search for Venerable Eshu Martin. These talks are also made available for free on our website for all of our members and associates. You may also want to download the Living Zen Podcast app which makes downloading and listening to the podcast effortless. Thank you for your support, and thank you for listening to Living Zen. Uh, It really is... uh, It's an honor to have the opportunity to speak to such a bright, uh, frankly, uh, attractive uh, group of people. Ah, it's not right. The truth is, I've seldom had to give a talk to such a stupid bunch of ugly people in my life. Well, actually, the truth is, uh, I've hardly spoken to most of you. And for most of the evening this evening, I've had my eyes down, so I don't even really know what you look like. But tonight, I wanted to talk a little bit about the fragility of this thing that we call self. So, First, I have to take you on a little bit of a roller coaster ride. Most of you don't know me from Adam. Uh, And yet, with just a few words, this guy in the fancy robe sitting at the end of the room can lift you up, make you feel good. Ah, I'm smart and so attractive. And then dumps you down, you stupid ugly. So easy. In Zen, we say that for the most part, we live our lives like cattle with a ring through our nose, being led this way and that by our desires and our aversions, constantly chasing after the things that we think will give us lasting happiness or maybe make us a fulfilled person, a big person, a complete person. A lot of people are here at the university for exactly this reason. Since we've been children, we've believed that maybe if we can get the right education or the right job or maybe the right partner, the right amount of money or drive the right car, that we'll somehow be beyond criticism, we'll somehow be complete, we'll have what we need to be happy. And so we go about our lives pursuing that with all of our will. And yet, somehow at the same time, the more we obtain, the more we gather and collect, it seems like the more fragile we can become. The more clearly we define who we are and what we like and what we stand for, the easier it is for us to be criticized, to be hurt. And part of what 
uh, is moving me to talk about this is that there's been a number of really, um, well, maybe it's because of the internet and Facebook and all that. There a lot of suicides recently that have been really high profile. People uh, talking about suicide. And this issue uh, carries a lot of weight for me because when I was in my teenage years, I wasn't a happy person. Uh, My personal response wasn't so much depression. It wasn't directed inwards towards myself, but usually outwards. I was an angry person. When I came into Zen practice, what I began to learn or what I began to understand was this thing that we call a self, this I that we hold up as an object, that we spend so much of our time trying to bolster up, make strong, make big, collect, amass. Fundamentally, it's a transient thing. It doesn't have any lasting, fixed substance. No matter how much we build it or create it or shape it or structure it or define it, there's always going to be somebody who thinks it's ugly and stupid. And yet, this thing, this fundamentally transient, empty thing that we call a self, which we are led by our noses here and there through suffering and difficulty. It does not define us. It is not who we truly are. This practice that we're engaged in, this simple practice of sitting and breathing, engaging with one another in this kind of formal communal practice is aimed at not the understanding, but the experiential realization of who we truly are. As we sit in this straight posture, simply paying attention to our breath, we witness all of the thoughts and feelings of self And it can seem like a crazy place to be when we stop for a moment and pay attention to what's going on in our minds and in our hearts. We think, oh my God, I must be crazy. Yet, if we continue to simply sit like silt in a jar of water, this noise slowly begins to settle. And beneath all of this racket, beneath all of this uh, busyness and noise, we can come to experience the ground of our being, our origin, our source. And this source, this origin, this quietness, To use traditional terms, this emptiness which has as its content all things is our nature, our very root. Usually I use this metaphor of an ocean. Each of us and everything in this vast cosmos manifesting as a wave. And we make the mistake of thinking ourselves a wave this practice reminds us that we are the ocean. But today I want to change a little bit. I often use this phrase, the vast cosmos. This is our nature. We can get caught up in what kind of uh, celestial body we are, what kind of planet, what kind of star, what kind of galaxy even. 
We can talk about what makes a good planet or a good galaxy. We can aspire to having, possessing certain qualities. But in the end, there's no best one. It's the infinite variety of the universe. If we want to know our own nature, we have to let go of each of these specific manifestations and realize that our nature is this space. This vast, empty space, which has as its cosmos, which has as its contents, all things. What's the value of that? Why is that important? As we go through our lives, we're going to be offered every kind of temptation, every kind of offer, every kind of desire. And we'll be moved into paths we never thought imaginable by the idea that if we can just have that will be complete, will be fulfilled, will be happy in some kind of lasting, permanent way. And in our lives, we're going to meet all kinds of people for all kinds of reasons who hate us, who think we're garbage, who think that we aren't worth the time of day and will tell us so in ways that are cruel and hurtful. And if we're stuck on this idea of self, on this idea of I, which is dependent on having and avoiding, pursuing and getting away from, then we have no rest. From the moment that we're born to the moment that we drop dead, We're either chasing after something or running away from something. But if for even a moment in this practice, in in even a second of our lives, if we're able to experience this, to experience this vastness, this formless emptiness that has as its content all things, our true nature. We become fundamentally unshakable. Sure, we can be hurt. Sure, we'll have our aspirations. But we know in the very core of us, that our value is not associated with this skin bag, this body, this degree, this job, this car, this partner. We have this fundamental knowing, this experiential realization of our value, our true nature, as we call it in the Zen tradition. So uh, we put up some posters for uh, Zen practice. And we often have lots of business people in the Zen Center that are trying to help with the marketing. Yeah? What is it that you sell at the Zen Center? What is your product? How can you, what's your elevator pitch? How do you sell it? Well, I think the wonderful thing about Zen practice is that we've got the best product in the whole damn world. It's you. The opportunity that you have through engaging in this simple practice of just sitting with your natural function in this very moment is that you can realize, you can experience for yourself who you truly are, your true nature, before your job, before your education, before your money, before your car, before your parents, before you were born. You 
This is the value of this practice. So make no mistake, this uh, activity that we're engaged in is a simple one. Just sitting, straight back, neat rows, breathing into our bellies. But as we engage in this practice, we can realize that this idea of self which stands separate from all other things in this cosmos, is an illusion. Not just understanding this in our heads, but experiencing this to the very core of our being and allowing ourselves to be transformed by it, allowing our lives to be transformed by it. Awakening to who we truly are. Thanks for listening to the Living Zen Podcast. If you follow Living Zen through iTunes, I would very much appreciate it if you would take a moment to let me know what you think about it by rating or reviewing the podcast so that new listeners can also hear what you have to say. Thank you for your time and for your support.